Light Finance, the world of financial freedom. Hello, it's Monday 17th of April, so it is the time to start the market forecast, in which we will of course summarize macro data publications for this week and fundamental factors that are currently driving the markets, based on which we will draw a trading plan for Euro USD. Okay, so starting with the calendar, which as usual on Monday is rather empty and we will receive some first key data on Tuesday and those data will be average earnings from the UK, ZEW Eurozone economic sentiment and CPI from Canada. On Wednesday, again CPI, this time from Great Britain, final CPI reading from Eurozone, which can be interesting if we will see some deviation from the preliminary reading. Apart from those numbers, we will receive crude oil inventories and CPI, this time from New Zealand in the evening. On Thursday, initial jobless claims from the US and finally Friday, which will start early with the Japan National Core CPI and Services PMI reading. After that, retail sales from the UK and for the rest of the day we will be getting services and manufacturing PMIs from the Eurozone UK and the US. So now is the time for some fundamental summary. So at first glance, the EURUSD pair fell was caused by the implementation of the buy on rumors, sell on facts principle. The decline in retail sales and industrial production was another evidence of the approaching US recession and should have pushed the EURUSD up. However, when everyone is buying, there is a great opportunity for sales. Hedge funds did so at the end of the week by exiting a part of long trades. In fact, the USD strengthening was caused by doubts. The market doubted its rightness after hawkish comments from Fed officials, large institutional investors and expert forecasts. So FOMC member Christopher Weller, uh, Waller does not yet see signs of a significant slowdown in demand and inflation approaching the 2% target. Therefore, he believes the central bank still has much to do. So the monetary restriction should be continued. So how can you discuss the end of a cycle? Well, BlackRock also doubted this. According to the world's largest asset manager, Inflation will remain high longer than the market suggests, while the Fed will raise borrowing costs by another 50 to 75 basis points. JP Morgan warned that the consequences could be very sad for investors who do not prepare for a long monetary tightening. Only 39 of experts polled by the Wall Street Journal predicts a dovish Fed reversal in 2023. This figure is significantly different from the January poll, where a small majority expected rate cuts in the second half of the year. The reason for this is more stable inflation. According to the April forecast, it will decrease to 3.53%, although the previous figure was 39 So the chance of a recession over the next 12 months remained at 61%. So positive corporate data from US banks also contributed to the Euro USD fall. Lending institutions have proven more resilient after a series of bankruptcies. Perhaps the banking system's problems are not so great as to cause economic collapse. Thus, exiting long trades doubts about the ideas of an early end of the monetary restriction cycle. And so the Fed's dovish reversal and positive data from banks triggered the euro usd decline so if the pair fails to hold above the supports at 1096 and 109.45 and 109.45 the risks of a correction will increase however the uptrend remains so switch from short-term sales to medium-term purchases and that would be all guys from my side thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one